Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our virtual town hall meeting. We have Superintendent DeCorpo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Chairman Wendy Fallenbach, Vice Chairman Peter Helmus. We have our facilities uh, director, Matt Cunningham, and Brian, all the way down here, he is our facilities uh, chairman. Jack uh, Healy will be joining us uh, shortly. Um, and why we're here tonight is we want to talk about the uh, unfortunate incident, which was the New Milford uh, fire at the high school, and uh, kind of what we're doing moving forward. Um, but first and foremost, why we started this virtual town hall meeting, many, was it now, Grant, many, many shows ago, and uh, started it right when the COVID had the lockdown. We do each and every week, we go over the COVID numbers as they are in totality. This isn't how many people currently have it, but is what the state kind of gives us as far as numbers. So the state of Connecticut is at 840,071, and Litchfield County is at 35,831, which is up 58 from yesterday. Hospitalizations for the entire county of Litchfield is at 12, which is up two from yesterday. And New Milford is at 5,332, which is up five from yesterday. As we continue to say each and every week, um, there's opportunities to get vaccinated, which you could do at uh, Pettibone. You can also do that at your favorite uh, commercial pharmacy. And we also do COVID testing at uh, Pettibone as well. You can go to our website, www.newmilford.org. You can click on the red banner and there you can register. Uh, very important. And I know uh, Superintendent Corbo, we have the ability now for our real youngsters to get vaccinated as well. I think that would be uh, something that I think we would all want to see as we're quickly preparing approaching, for school preparing for school. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and today, um, uh, you guys had went up and visited uh, uh, the opportunity to kind of start this thing off to see pods, as we're talking about. If you could kind of talk a little bit about you guys going up where was it the Cheshire today? Cheshire, Cheshire today? Yes. Okay. So we were able to um, actually see these these uh, portable classrooms on site, get a tour of what the inside would look like. Um, on my Twitter feed, the superintendent Twitter feed, you can see a picture of what half the size of a classroom looks like, a picture of what the restrooms are set up like. They were very, very nice, actually mimicking what the inside of our classrooms look like now and the restrooms in our school facility. We were thrilled to see how nice they were. Um, we know there's a plan for Mr. Healy's joining us now. A plan for their location on the grounds of the high school and a plan by the company to source the classrooms over time and also to have enough um, man and woman power to put them together should we choose to go down that road um, and have them assembled in um, a few weeks. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we have some uh, people that have joined us already. Mike Sinella says hello to everybody. Hello. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. Jack. Jack Healy, our DPW director, joined us, so thank you, Jack. Um, Marissa Bliss says uh, hello to everybody. Uh, Pat Erickson says hello. Ray Lillis, hey, Ray, says good evening to everybody. Um, let's see, uh, Hillary Ram had asked, do we type questions in the comments? Yes, you do. Um, Mike and Ray already said uh, that as well. And uh, let's see, that's it so far that we have as far as comments. So uh, we could start off, uh, I think, with uh, Jack and then with Matt, kind of where where are we at right now in the process? Well, in the process, we're in the uh, in the cleanup phase in the school, mm -hmm. and we've gone through. We've identified the rooms that need a lot of work. We have identified the rooms that need a, a moderate amount of work, and we've identified the rooms that need a little bit of work. And uh, with that, we're starting to section off the school. Um, we're hoping to give the school back a couple parts of it next week. Um, we're hoping to give them back the auditorium and the gymnasium section. In the meantime, that's Bell some Ford, good news. Yeah. Very. Okay. All the desks, okay. or I don't know if all the desks are on that. The majority of the desks have been removed. They've been yeah. cleaned. They're down in the cafeteria, and then they're going to have to be taken off site because just the sheer amount of space they take up. In my walk through here before I came here this evening, we had the majority of the ceiling tiles were taken down in the second floor, including classrooms, uh, portions of the first floor, and I believe the third floor, they've all been removed too. So, yeah. And so we're starting, to, and we're starting. We're putting together a plan. I started. We're putting together a plan of how, what rooms are going to be available, when we think they're going to be available. We're ordering. We're already ordering uh, construction materials, so, so that we're not caught in the supply chain mm -hmm. issues. Um, again, I'm sorry I was late, but uh, I, we've looked at the portable classrooms. 
I've already met with an electrician uh, to start laying out the electrical feed for that area and the water feed for that area. So we're laying that those spaces out so that this is going to be, we're going to try to fast track this. We, we heard uh, information today, and I know mm -hmm. the superintendent and the, <laughs> and the chairman of the, uh, of the Board of Ed were a little bit taken back, but this is normally a five to six month period, and we're trying to do it in five to six weeks. So yes. there's very a lot going on. You're going to see a lot of action going on very quickly. Excellent. Thank you, Jack. Matt, uh, I know you just said you were kind of in the building. What What's happening right now at the building? So we've had contractors visit for the elevators. We've had contractors visit for the sprinkler systems. We've had contractors visit for our fire panels and burglar alarms. We've spoken to our camera contractors. So all the different components that you would have in the building, we've already at least spoken to. We've gotten boots on the ground to make some assessments and to try to see what we're up against in the long term. I know they have electricians there going through, as I think Jack talked mm -hmm. about last night, every circuit in the building. So they're on there. They're working 12-hour days. They have upwards of 50 people in there. Maybe. Um, yeah, they mobilize. They have power there running off a generator into the center of the building, sort of the epicenter where the fire had occurred. And on the peripherals, we are actually have street power there. So uh, it's a lot of movement. I know Belford, who's the contractor that we hired, I mean, they're Correct. world class. Mm -hmm. They mobilize fast, and they've been there every day, including Saturday and Sunday, 12 hour days. Amazing. So if you look at the man hours, it's tremendous. Yeah. And I know. Uh, Wendy, you had uh, thank you and the Board of Ed for having the superintendent for sure. having the meeting last night for the parents. So I know, uh, Superintendent Grover, you were talking a little bit about to the parents, and I think to the public tonight too, is obviously your decisions, your guys' decisions on how school is A, going to open, mm -hmm. and B, when it would open. I guess yes. it's all going to be dependent on what you're going to be hearing from Jack and Matt and the contractor. Yeah, so we're anxiously awaiting the air quality test results um, to find out next week what which classrooms will be available to us when how many and then we have some crucial decisions to make about ordering materials our technology director was on site with us today Jeff Turner so he's looking at smart boards inside portables if we decide to go down that that road um, we know that we're going to have to uh, organize who's going to be in the portables and which ones might be taken away first um, and putting those classrooms that might be readily available almost you know maybe a few weeks to a month after school opens to transition those out and have everyone go back in the building who were in those portables um, and thinking about crucial decisions about will teams be together meaning like subject area courses all be outside together to make it easier for kids um, for example, the whole science department being either in the building or out of the building, math, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we have a lot to talk about. We have to think about parking. We have to think about curriculum night and open house. We have to look at sports. And we've started all those conversations, as I said last night, but it's largely, de largely dependent on what's going to be available to us um, prior to the start of school. I know one thing, Wendy, we were definitely stressing last night, all of us, was for this to really happen. It's a very complex project. For us a to all work together and please also to asking our residents and our parents to have a little patience definitely patience uh this is a fluid situation uh we're trying to get the information to the community all in one voice and 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 as the information comes in um i'm confident our community will have some patience i know that um rightfully so everyone is on edge and so the purpose of last night was just to acknowledge that we all recognize the severity of the situation and we're going to work very very hard to get that done it was exciting this morning so thank you for the invite and being allowed to go um, that um, to have that opportunity to to see that we may have some hope with with some options there so it's good excellent so Allie tuned in Allie said to say hello to everybody same with Trevor uh, Pat just wanted to say thank you all for doing an outstanding job in dealing with a disaster uh, uh, Victoria says thank you all for all of your hard work and uh, Amanda Silva want to know what happens to all of the contents in the rooms where the contacts catalog we are in the process of establishing a process for that and that's going to be a collaborative process between the people who are doing the remediation Belfour and the Board of Ed we, we're not going to make a, a universal decision without involving them uh, right now it's more important that we get the areas clean and cleared so then we can we can make access to the, that space or those materials safely. Um, the decision on whether to bring them outside and have them look at them there or in the or in some place in the building is yet to be made. But that will be a decision that we will have a discussion between us and the school administration before we do do anything. Excellent. 
And uh, Mike Sanella posted your Twitter feed online. Oh, oh nice. Superintendent, Thanks, Mike. so we've got that there. And uh, Chris uh, Cosgrove had asked, will we need diesel generators to run the portable pods? No, what we're looking at doing is we've, I've talked with an electric, electrical uh, company already. We will talk with Eversource. We're going to find a, a, a place to take it uh, off their distribution system. We will place a pole, drop it down. Our goal is to run a, uh, a, a line directly to the, the pods underground and to feed them independently off of a, a new meter. That system will be completely divorced from the, t from the school. Okay. Carolyn Jane had asked a question, and I'm going to try and interpret it, Superintendent, but if the high school delays opening, will. So I'm assuming she's saying, is there going to be a delay in opening? And That'll be largely dependent <laughs> on um, how long it will take for us to get the portables, how many we'll be able to get at one time, how quickly we'll be able to mobilize the setup. Um, right now, I believe the count is at 50 portables. And so you can imagine that they're going to be coming in in stages because we won't have them all at once and there'll be a lot of movement. So it's still too early to tell. I'm really hopeful that I won't have to, but you never know. It's, it's definitely a decision that will be made as we get a little further along in the process and I have more information. Thank you. Kathleen had asked, uh, and I've heard this a lot, Jack, and I'm sure Wendy and Pete, you guys have heard the same thing, Superintendent. What caused the fire in the first place and can it happen again? And what I can tell you, Kathleen, uh, the, the fire marshal, Kevin Reynolds, is continuing his investigation. And really to give you a full, uh, uh, a kind of full view of that, we have to wait for Fire Marshal Reynolds to give us that, uh, give us his analysis on that. But will we have a fire again on that roof? I can 100% tell you with all of us here, that's not happening. I can tell you that right now. Um, let's see, we have... Uh, uh, does the school's insurance cover the cost uh, of whatever the teachers still had in the classrooms? We, from our conversation with Kermit, yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and Carolyn asked, I think this is a follow-up question, Superintendent, will it affect any of the other schools with opening? Hopefully not. Um, it may make sense as we get closer to keep all schools on the same schedule. I have been reviewing all of the contracts, the federal holidays that are required, just taking a good look at everything that might be a possibility. But I would like to keep all the schools on schedule if, if possible um, and not have one school be impacted and not all schools. I know many families have children in multiple locations across district and I want to make it as convenient for them to stay on schedule as possible. And Christine had asked, where are the pods going to be placed? Mm. Well, I mean, go ahead. Matt. Currently, we're looking at the rear parking lot. We think that would be the least impactful area and still allow us to continue to have some staff and student parking, hopefully. We just don't know at this stage their footprint, and that's obviously contingent upon how many rooms we can get back and how many pods we would need. We also recognize though, that there's fall sports and we have big games, and we want to be able to have people park there and enjoy them, and business as usual in that respect. If I can give you a little perspective, it's going to be about 50,000 square feet which is probably, you know, in most cases, a small school. And that's what we're attempting to put together in the next six to seven weeks. Amazing. And I know I had stopped there uh, earlier today, and what I did want to thank all of you for is was I saw the kids still able to play on those fields. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's, you know, as we're trying to all create some normalcy uh, for our kids, and I know that was a big thing that was talked about at your meeting and at Last town night. council mm -hmm. too is, you know, these kids that are in the high school of gone through a lot as we all know and trying to make this as more normal as we can so i just want to thank you guys uh from a dad you know especially <laughs> of letting those fields forward. still on there and we asked them we said can we try to make the exterior lights a priority our parking lot lights for safety and the field lights because as you know we're 365 we have practice going on day and night so mm -hmm. and they're not just our school there's also uh, you know sports in our community that come and use those fields so we were glad they were able to get that on almost immediately Amazing. And we have uh, Nick Pooter uh, who asked a question as well. Um, let's see. He has a thanks to all the staff and volunteers for making this happen. What portions of the school building do you hope to have operational on opening day? Good question. Okay. <laughs> right now I can tell you that the music wing and the, um, and the uh, gymnasium wings will be open. Uh, our plan is also to have the cafeteria open. Correct. I walked it today with Belfour this afternoon. 
Um, I'm, I'm asking them to prioritize the hallway that goes from the gymnasium to the music room in the back goes by the cafeteria to make all those rooms available because to me that's a very important area because that will connect to the outside to the, mm -hmm. to the outside classrooms it connects the cafeteria gymnasium in that area those are the areas of prioritizing and then also the administrative wing excellent a man had asked a question what if the high school is not ready is there a backup plan uh, the SMS students go to SMS at a certain time and then the building becomes high school at a different time using another town's high school uh, what are the options and I know Superintendent, you, the board, I mean, you guys are in these lengthy conversations of having multiple plans, yes. unfortunately. Yes. I think you have yeah. to. I think you have to ask all those questions. What is the least disruptive? What can we pivot when the information comes in? And what can we bring forward? So uh, I think there's been a lot of conversation, I'm sure, in Mr. Corpo's office, and I know with board members of, you know, what are the scenarios and how can we do them? So I recognize that question. We have looked into when was the last time any of the other schools housed 1,300 mm -hmm. students or less in the exact right. state that they're in. And we were reminded that Sarah, that Sarah Noble went under a massive renovation, making it different than it was when it was once a high school. Mm -hmm. And so we do not think that the entire student body, if it came to that, which we don't think it will, would fit in those buildings. But certainly there's schedule changes that can be made. There's There are other avenues we can go down and use of classrooms if we absolutely had to. We're really hopeful for the best scenario, but we are planning for others internally right now. Excellent. And uh, Pat had said, uh, as Wendy said, we all need patience. This is a monumental task, and she's amazed at how much uh, everything has gotten done already. She said, there's no doubt in my mind you all do your best to get this the kids back uh, in school on time. So thank you, Pat. And uh, let's see, we have Chris uh, Cosgrove. He says, it's great for our town. And uh, let me pull this back up. Great for our town and kids that all of you are pulling together to recover as fully and fast as possible. I know, Pete, that's one of the things we talked about at council. And again, last night, as uh, uh, first of all, the staff uh, from, from uh, your department, Superintendent, Board of Ed, they were doing the yeoman's job as well and getting some of the things out. They were at accolades, and I know, Pete, you, you yeah, know, make it, sure that they had that. An amazing response mm -hmm. uh, by all the leadership in town, it, uh, in every venue and every organization, um, supporting the efforts and, and collaborating so well together. Um, one of the things that was brought out in last night's meeting, which was a phenomenal effort by the district staff, is this: the summer students, where, where were they supposed to go mm -hmm. in two days? Um, Laura Olson, Holly Hollander, and, the, and that district staff figured out where to send 375 students with all of their paperwork still in high school. So when the question came up about, you know, the teacher's belongings, it's the teacher's belongings, it's all the student paperwork and everything else like that. So that effort um, was just incredible. It's just incredible. And that, that's one example of, of some of the things that you know the town is doing to to come together to make this all sort of work out and and open up when we want to open up and i know uh p kind of piggybacking on that i know uh a lot of us were at the fire mm -hmm. unfortunate but to watch those volunteer firemen coming from everywhere mm -hmm. not only our town which we're so thankful for and then also galesville as the other ones were coming in they were making sure the rest of our town there's a fire were covered but you had them coming from Bantam, Kent, Danbury, Brookfield, everywhere. Then you had the multiple ambulances coming in that were here on mutual aid. Then you had our CERT team that was here, our police department, just a true community spirit. And then, uh, I don't know the emails that you're receiving, Superintendent and Wendy, mm -hmm. but emails I'm getting, people just like saying, Pete, I have a broom, I have a brush. Can I come in? Can I help out? This was brought whatever, up last night. Yeah, whatever we need, I'll be there to help you guys. We, we're fortunate. We've had so many members of the community, uh, whether on social media, what can we do? How can we help? And believe me, we'll tap into that when we can. And we're really grateful for that opportunity. And I know, Brian, uh, we have municipal building committee tonight. And mm -hmm. I know I can't thank you enough because you've been to our meetings. You know, sometimes they go a little long. But you're also the chairman of the facilities. So this falls on your committee a lot too. So if you kind of give us give us an update on that. Well, 
just a lot of meetings, Pete. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, and a lot of uh, decisions that need to be made. And, yeah. you know, like everybody's been saying, we're all coming together. It's, you know, they say out of a crisis comes opportunity. And maybe the opportunity Amen. here is that we can all get together, get the kids back in school in September. And Absolutely. Sherry has a question uh, that I've heard quite a bit. Who's going to pay for all this? And why was an insurance amount checked with the company doing the work on the school? So first, I'll turn that over a little bit to Jack. But Sherry, the, the uh, amount of insurance that is covered is uh, a very substantial amount, both by the contractor, uh, who I believe has 11 million, and then another 7 million. So that's like 17. And then there's also a bond, which is four and a half million. Mm -hmm. And then also we are covered <clears throat> under Kerma as well. Correct? That's exactly it, Mayor. And how this works is we, we the town immediately just steps in with Kerma and we pay the first $10,000 and that gets reimbursed at some point. And then Kerma keeps this process going and then they work with the, uh, with the contractor's insurance to make sure all these claims are, uh, are paid. And then at the end, they, they work out the, the, the agreement between the two of them. So it is going to be paid for. Right now, um, there's nothing on the insurance side or payment side that is holding up the process. Um, I, when Matt and I work on something, we immediately get together, and just because the process we have, uh, I contact Kerma, tell them what we're going to do, and we immediately get a response, you know, keep going. And another thing kind of staying on that, uh, that, that, that same uh, track, so to speak, is we want to expedite this. Is all we're all here tonight, I'll talk about how we're going to do this for our kids. Is uh, I had Attorney Randy DeBella uh, do an, uh, uh, actually create an executive order, which I signed, making it a na uh, making it a town disaster, emergency disaster. And what does that mean? It gives us a fast track, so it allows us to get the pods as quickly as we possibly can. Allows us to fast track all of this uh, stuff that could take months and weeks. To get done, we can do as quickly as possible. So I want to thank Attorney DeBella for that, and uh, that's one of the things as we're all partnering up together to do to make it uh, much better. Hillary Rampant said she agrees. It's fantastic to see our town pull together for our schools. Uh, Allie says uh, kudos to everyone, and uh, Marie Crawford says thank you, and she loves it. The Milford's pulling together, and it's a great team that's doing that. And then uh, Kelly had asked. Uh, a question of superintendent I know you talked about again to reiterate it uh, last last night the same with uh, uh, our chair chairwoman uh, Wendy falling back if students have to go remote for the first first few weeks will sports still be allowed to go on who would provide the transportation for working parents so we have every intention of having sports continue to go on uh, kids were able to take the fields this Saturday which was really exciting so that that hasn't been taken away um, in terms of remote learning for the first few weeks, not sure about that yet. Um, and I'm not certain what the question means about would transportation be provided for working parents if it's remote instruction? Because remote instruction takes place at home right. um, with students you know, working in conjunction with their teacher in a virtual environment. So if she can clarify, I'd be happy to try to respond. I think the question probably is more how will they get their kids to and from practice if they don't have busing? would be my guess right which would, yes um, that's a that's a tough right. question to answer at this time but sure. definitely something we can see if it's possible to do I just with with the driver shortage and some of the um, runs that we've needed the bus company to make I don't know what will be possible just yet for this school year Excellent. and uh, Christine had asked uh, how much of the building has been affected well the entire building was affected um, what I will say is, Matt, what do you think the... I mean, it's in varying degrees. So obviously we had two classrooms where there was a fire there. The yeah. material was burned. So if you're just talking about the epicenter, you're looking at two classrooms. But then as you walk your way out, there was water damage, as you saw from pictures last night. Excuse me. As you get further out in the perimeter of the building, there's actual smoke damage. So um, I think... 60%? You, you know, it's hard to say. We feel like that actually when you look at two, the, the ancillary rooms, the gymnasium wing and the theater wing, seeing that they were virtually not impacted at all. There are fire doors that closed. Yeah. Air handlers went down, so that smoke wasn't able to go and mitigate and get down to those uh, in those areas. So, uh, as far as quantifying into a percentage, sixty, perhaps, yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. And Barry and Mary uh, 
uh, said, greetings, thank you for all your efforts. And they said, they apologize if we missed it, but recurse if we'd known what the cause of the fire is known. So Barry and Mary, right now, uh, officially, we are waiting for the fire marshal, Kevin Reynolds, to give us that as an official one. So right now, we're just waiting for Kevin's official statement with that. And uh, Chris Cosgrove actually answered that as well, so thank you, Chris. And Suzanne had asked, has the building been inspected by any structural engineers? After all, this is damaged. What is the plan moving forward with the roofing project after the fire and the portion of the roof that has not been completed? Great question, Suzanne. Yes. Jack it, and Matt. Yes, it was inspected. <laughs> yeah, right, Matt? We, we saw the structural did inspect yeah. it. And we know that it's safe for Belfort to be working in there now. Obviously, as you can see last night, for instance, in the pictures, that the cementish is fireproof and it's sprayed on there, did its job encapsulated and protected those beams and bought us a couple hours and so those aren't warped they're not destroyed but uh it will have to be addressed they're obviously and recoded with fireproofing up in those areas so structurally we feel good excellent and brian you're right kelly what it was for practice okay and pete can so, i can i say something absolutely about that? Pete. so you know that was a good question and the community says how can i help and i would say that if it comes to that, then it would be nice if the community could start organizing carpools for the student athletes so that they work together as a community to get those student athletes to the field and not rely so much on um, an organization of a bus or something like that. Because, I mean, I grew up with four kids who played sports and most of the efforts for parents were carpooling. In the high school, a hockey team was a bunch of carpools in the morning because no one wants to get up at four o'clock in the morning. So. These are things that the community can do by starting to think about those things and, and organizing maybe now to do some of those things. Excellent. Uh, state Representative Buckby is watching and he also said, we have already begun discussions on the state level to see how the state can help in recovery. Appreciate so that's that. great news, absolutely. Thank you, Bill. Yes. Especially as we do have state funding on the roof. Mm -hmm. yes. So Billy, we're definitely gonna be talking to you and uh, our other state representatives about how we can make sure that's mm -hmm. completed and expedited. Mm -hmm. So thank you, uh, Billy. Uh, we also have, uh, let's see, um, Mike Sinella had stated that uh, at the last week's Municipal Building Committee, the roofing contractor did admit fault. Mike, uh, that is in the minutes, but again, for an actual official statement, we have to wait for the uh, Fire Marshal Kevin Reynolds uh, to do that. And then uh, uh, Kelly Watson had just kind of made an observation that w could the buses at the high school uh, at, at the end of school, pick up students who need rides to school for practice. And I know, Superintendent, not to be redundant, but you guys are trying to all figure that out. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Okay. Alexandria Thomas said, thank you to everyone. Amazing work by so many uh, to take care of New Milford students and entire community. And uh, John had said, uh, is there parking anywhere else that can be used mm. with shuttle service back and mm. forth? in place of lost parking due to pod placement. We're looking into that we, now. That we were can. actually looking for an area for relocation, excuse me, relocation for emergency events for parents uh, to park. We're looking to see if any, any location around the high school might be available to us. So if you own a parking lot in any area <laughs> near the high school, please contact my office, Jack Healy or Matt Cunningham, so that we could speak with you about that because we are going to need some offsite parking. I know I've mentioned to the mayor that maybe Pettibone could yep. be an area, but it is a distance away. So if anyone knows of anywhere closer who would be willing to help us out, that would be a way that the community could really support us at this time. Okay. And Megan said, can we just give a shout out to these students that have had to go through the pandemic, remote learning, getting situated in the school after that now have to learn in a pod style environment from the fire. Hats off to these kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know we spoke about it at town council. We spoke about it again. You, you guys did at the board uh, board night. meeting, and we'll continue to talk about it. How amazing it is! Now all of us and the whole community wants to make sure these kids are back in school. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Amanda wants to know. I know people want to help. Are teachers allowed to take and request donations of toys, books, and crayons if people offer? Hmm. I think it would be, we always welcome donations. Um, I think it would be prudent for us just to wait because storage right now might be an issue for us. Sure. We're struggling with storage for the desk restorations that are happening right now and things like that. We're sending all of our packaging over to Hill and Plain Elementary School right now. 
where we're accepting deliveries for the high school and all of the mail is going to Hill and Plain as well. So we just don't have the space right now, but absolutely when school starts up, we'll be speaking to teachers before that time to find out what they might need. And um, we will definitely notify families and the public if there is anything that they could provide. Um, and so I really appreciate that question. So it's just not right now, but definitely in the future for sure. Don't, don't a lot of our donations go through the PTOs though? Uh, not always. I mean, not always. Some not always, but they're to, yeah, to But we have really wonderful PTO organizations in town that and they're willing that, to help. that help organize donations in different ways to um, our student population, and yes. they do a great job. So, and I think uh, as we were just saying, once you once the you guys are ready, you'll let us know. We can push it out. So exactly. That I'm and sure it, you'll get a wave of. It, it, yeah. it, it doesn't one necessarily one. mean one location either. Yeah, we could set up locations mm -hmm. if people would like to make donations, and we supply what we need. We could have. You know areas here and it's whatever so and thank uh you. fred silva had asked is there any consideration of having an interim fix to the building to allow it to be occupied for this school year and scheduled for full repairs for next summer so that's a jack and matt question i'm not sure exactly what we can't um fix something halfway let me put it that way it has to meet all codes building codes fire codes and air quality codes so i would say i'm not sure what the question is, but we can't go halfway. If we're going to put students in there, it has to be code compliant, it has to be air quality safe, and it has to be appropriate for students to study in. Yeah, certainly, but I certainly think that, let's just say, for instance, theoretically, if the third floor needed to be remediated, we may still have areas on the second floor and the first floor that are accessible, and then we could sort of cordon that area off and have that as being sort of a job site that's separate from it. So, you know, we do anticipate that we will have a percentage of that building available to us, obviously, this fall. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pat Erickson had made some suggestions. Check with the elephant's trunk for parking. I, yeah. I will do that tomorrow, okay. Pat, and let, yes. and let you know. See, oh, thank you. that's uh, another one asked about the golf course across yes. the street. Yeah. Um, I think the golf course could be kind of challenging because you're crossing that, yes. we discussed four that lanes, actually. Yes. which would be... We actually yes. discussed that. Yep. Okay. Uh, as we said, you guys are already thinking about these plans, so yes. that's great. Yes. And uh, Anne uh, had asked, um, or actually Kim... Patel had asked, how are the staff getting compensated for loss of teaching personal supplies? We are answer. working at, that's part of the interactive program, or inter cooperation program between us and the school. Uh, we've talked to Kerma about that. Uh, again, we want to we want to make sure we have a, a plan for teachers to see what materials they have before we, we get to that point. Yes. And uh, I know we're approaching a little bit after six, and I know everybody, I know everybody's a, exhausted from all the multiple times i just wanted to thank everybody for coming and we are as we said before going to be doing this every two weeks yes right. updating everybody kind of on this platform on all of our other platforms as well yes. to let uh, everybody know kind of what's going on because obviously kids are most important a high school uh is really a jewel of the town we want to make sure we we get it done right so we want to thank everybody so uh we'll kind of go around the, the uh, room superintendent any kind of last words for tonight's virtual town hall meeting. I want to thank the public who has participated tonight and who came out last night or actually for any of the various meetings that have been held across town. It's wonderful to hear from you. We welcome your ideas and input and we're excited for what the future holds for the kids. We've got some solid plans in place and we'll, we're really working hard to get them back to school on time. Thank you to Jack Healy and Matt Cunningham most specifically and, and their teams. They've been working very, very hard to move items for summer school and to help us prepare. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Excellent. Wendy? I would agree with that. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, for all your hard work. And of course, everyone involved in all of the intricacies of this project. As I said, it's fluid. We'll try and get you the information. Um, our staff has been amazing. Um, and our community, we can't do it without them. And, and that's the intent of all these meetings. We shouldn't do it without them. We need them all the way. So, um, you know, I appreciate the opportunity of going down there this morning. It was. Um, it, it was hopeful and I think every time you can get a little bit of hope in, in light of something like this we're gonna move it forward so thank Amen. you Pete uh, they say New Milford is the greatest of all towns <laughs> absolutely and uh, town the USA yeah these 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 trials these challenges that we face uh, these are moments where this town really shines it, it really does and you know all of the people here at, at this forum and all the people outside the forum that are working hard to make these things happen is, is just an example of of why we are the greatest of all towns. Amen. Brian? Well, you know, I just want to thank everybody um, 
you know, all the people doing the remediation who are working so hard and how, how Belfour came mm. to, so quickly to, to help yeah. us. And, of course, uh, you know, Matt and, you know, everybody who's, you know, getting this project going because we are just getting going, but it's getting, you know, we're starting running, I feel. Absolutely. Matt? You know, I'm sort of looking at the glasses half full. Um, to your point last night, Mr. Mayor, this could have been a complete loss, but the first responders that came out were so professional. Mm -hmm. They set up an incident command center. I was part of that and helping provide plans and had maintenance people there that we could talk to the building. They had a drone flying over there live showing hot spots for their people and that we were able to see the extent of what was going on. Um, and so, you know, it could be a lot worse than it is. And so, and, and to your point again, thank you to the first responders that came out there and were, did a tremendous job. Jack? I'm just going to echo what everybody said. And I can tell you, if you had been there the day of the fire, when we walked in with the mayor and Matt, everybody, it, it was, I would say, a very depressing scene. And I've seen a lot of them. And just to come in the next day and see lights on in the school and see that they've already extracted the water, mm -hmm. uh, it's been a week and there's been a tremendous amount of work. I'm very, I pro I'm probably too optimistic. I'm very optimistic that we're going to be able to turn over and get people into that school very quickly. We're going to be able to turn over quality teaching space to the teachers and to the administration uh, and pull this off. And when we're all said and done, you're going to have a, a very nice area to teach in and a very good school. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Ms. Pillow said the Catholic Church uh, is one I, of the things. I so, miss, yes. Yeah, so we, <laughs> we'll you. definitely be looking at all this. Thank you. And uh, Joanne said, please consider advising on the best use of the town nonprofits. Uh, for the best stretch of the taxpayer and we definitely will be calling on as mm -hmm. we're prepared for our nonprofits in the community to absolutely help as uh we know we would and kim says thank you as uh matt had said to all the responders and decision makers great job working together to organize multiple facets unforeseen wrenches are the worst but we have strong people in place special kudos to our new milford facilities team mm -hmm. and uh, tammy says toys are not needed this time because it is the high school but I'm sure, as we talked about before, there's going to be much, much needs. Olga says thank you uh, for everybody involved. And uh, let's see, Jennifer says uh, thankful for our first responders. Uh, then thank you that mostly the building was empty. We did have a few nice. students and people in there, but yes. thank goodness it wasn't Good the next point. day. Thank goodness, yes. Yeah. And uh, again, for everybody, thank you for tuning in as we do to close out each and every one of these meetings. We do thank our first responders, our medical community. Uh, we, spank, we thank our town employees, also our Board of Ed employees, from our educators mm -hmm. to our paraeducators to, yes. to uh, I never leave out the lunch ladies. No. Oh, never goodness. leave them out. That's not a good thing <laughs> at Every, all. Everyone makes a difference. Amen. In Bus drivers. At, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. And, uh, and the people as well. Uh, as I talk about a little bit at the end, they just can pay it forward. I hear a lot of times they go to the coffee shop and pay somebody's uh, thing for it. It just, uh, just shows the true dynam the dynamic of our town, mm -hmm. how special it is. And again, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. God bless New Milford Proud, New Milford Strong. See you next time.